Hello? Wah, 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 wah. No, I don't want to talk about my car's extended warranty. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, yes, I do want to talk about how to control my vMix production with a phone or a tablet, though. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. Just by pressing a button? Wow, thanks totally real person on the other end of this call. Do you want to stick around and help me make a vMix web controller tutorial video? Wah, 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 no? You got better things to do? Oh, that's fair enough. G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here, and today we're looking at the vMix Web Controller. The Web Controller is a browser-based vMix interface that allows you to control your vMix production. All you need is a device that's connected to the same network as your vMix computer, and for that device to have a browser on it. So today I brought some examples. I have an old Samsung tablet here, I've got a Windows Surface, and I have my iPhone here that I've got running the vMix Web Controller. Now you can run the web controller with anything that has a browser. So that might be a computer, a phone, a laptop, tablet, Mac, or even a compatible smart TV. Now we did try it on someone's Tesla, but unfortunately they don't allow local URLs to be used in the browser. So unfortunately it didn't work. So let's take a look at how to get connected to the web controller. So firstly, you'll need to go to the settings section of Emix, which is in the top right hand corner. Then you'll just need to go to the web controller tab over here. Now to use the web controller, you'll need to tick the enabled box up the top. You'll then see the default port that the web controller uses and then the URL for access. So this is the address that you need to enter into your browser in order to use the web controller. Now you can just double click this like so, you could double click it uh, and then that will open up the default browser on your vMix PC and you'll be able to see the web controller or you can just copy and paste this URL to give to somebody or to add to one of your other devices. So below that, you'll see the access area. You can set up a username and password to access the web controller. And you can also choose to allow certain features with or without the login. For example, you may want to restrict everything but the live LAN so people on the local network can view your stream but not have the ability to switch cameras, change titles, or control your production. So underneath the box, you'll see some more advanced uh, access and security tick boxes. Now these are left on by default. If you wanna know a little bit more about this, check out the link in the description that will go over each of these tick boxes in more detail. But like I said, that will be for more advanced use cases. So these are left on by default. Now with anything to do with live streaming and vMix and this you know, web control access and that sort of thing, uh, definitely, Follow the three rules of live streaming to test, test and test again before going live with any of this. Um, that's very important. All right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, open up the web controller now and uh, check it out. So in order to do that, all I need to do is just click on my URL here. I'm just gonna double click on this. That'll open up my default browser and open up the web controller as you can see here. Now by default, it's going to open up on the first screen which is the shortcut screen. Now the shortcut screen displays any shortcuts that you've got selected in vMix to be displayed in the web controller. So as you can see up the top here, we have the vMix logo, that doesn't do anything. And then next to that, we have five objects. Now these are the five menu items and they are shortcuts, switcher, tally lights, titles, and live LAN. So firstly, we have shortcuts, as we mentioned before, any shortcuts that we have set up for the web controller will be able to be used here. Now, if you've got a tablet or a phone or something, all you need to do is roll over it, click on it, and it's going to display what you've got set up on that shortcut. So I have that one set up to do a title. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at shortcuts and I'll show you how you can set one up with the web controller. So because we're already on the settings screen, we just need to go down to shortcuts now. Now you'll see that I have five shortcuts set up, but you're probably thinking, Tim, there's only three shortcuts set up on your production. And that's because I've restricted the auto-tune ones down the bottom here, not to display in the web controller. So I'm the only one that can use the auto-tune. Uh, so if I click on this here, I'm just gonna go to edit and you'll see that it doesn't display in the web controller. So I've unticked this box right at the bottom. So let's go ahead and show you how you can set up a shortcut to add it to the web controller. So I'm just gonna click add down here. I'm gonna go to find, and then I'm gonna press just the number three Click OK. And for the function, I'm just gonna make it a cut function to a video that I have set up. So I've got a bees video here. Now I'm gonna give it a title down here, like so. Now, depending on how you're going to set up your shortcut, 
will depend on whether you really need to give it a title or not. Uh, I like to give it a title anyway, um, but if you choose the default method to display the shortcut, it will display things like the name of the shortcut, the function, and the input that it goes on. So if you plan on using this default method, as you can see here, it's best to give it a title so it stands out just a little bit better. Now for the display, like I said, you can set up default, which will display the name of the shortcut, the function and the input. Color will display a color. Image will display an image. So if you wanna create an image to make it really simple for someone to know what it is, you can do that. Or you can choose a thumbnail. So that will show a, a still image thumbnail of what the input is. So I'm going to select image for this one. I'm just gonna to go to browse and I'm gonna find this awesome B1 that I've created, as you can see here. So it's very obvious that it's a bees video. I'm going to select a local shortcut um, just because I like to save them to the preset, but you can make it a global one if you needed to. And now underneath here is the very important one, show in web controller. So by ticking this, we'll now have access to it from that shortcut screen in our web controller. So I'm just going to click OK down at the bottom. So let's go ahead and refresh this browser here. As you can see, I now have the uh, bees has appeared. I press the bees. As you can see, it's now played my bees video. So being able to pick and choose the shortcuts that appear in the web controller is really handy if you wanna simplify the switching for the production. So for example, you might have some volunteers that are running your show. Now you could just set up a few options such as switching a camera, overlaying a title, starting recording and streaming and that sort of thing. So you can make it very simple for someone that's learning how to do live video. You can even create really simple images like I have here with my B so that they know exactly what they, happens when they press that shortcut. So let's take a look at the next screen and that is the switcher. So we're just going to click on the little switcher thing here. Now, all of these things here represent what we have set up in vMix. So C represents camera, N is NDI, V is video, T is title, I is image, and the number will represent what input they are in your production. So this is how the switcher is laid out. Across the top, you have the output row. That means that you can switch any of your inputs to the output just by tapping or clicking on it, and it will appear green if it's in the output. Underneath that, you'll see the preview row, so you can tap any of your inputs to send them to the preview. And then finally, underneath that, you'll see the overlays, so you can set up your overlay channels, and then you can click on any of your inputs to be put into any of the overlay channels. So let's go for an example here. Let's cut to video four directly. So as you can see, it cuts directly to video four by pressing to it, and we can switch back to the camera by pressing that as well. Now, if you wanna move something to the preview, I could just press it here, and it's going to move to the preview along that preview row. And uh, I can also switch between these as well by using the transition bar down the bottom here, which corresponds to the one that you have in vMix. As you can see, it starts with quick play and then goes down to fade to black down the bottom. Now, if I wanna put something in an overlay, all I need to do is select the overlay channel here and which one I want to use, which is this title. So I'm going to press T5, overlay channel one. And as you can see, it has overlaid my title and then I can press it again to make it go away. So it's a really lightweight way to kind of view the entire interface in vMix and you can easily switch it and you can just do it on a browser and it's very low traffic in order to kind of send everything back and forth. So that's the uh, full switcher screen. Now let's move over to the next one, which is the tally light section. So the tally light screen allows you to create a tally on your device. So it's gonna change the color of the screen depending on what's happening to that input that you've selected in the production. So I'm just going to use my iPhone here as an example, and I'm going to select camera to use the tally on. So I've selected the camera. Now green means that the camera is in the program output. And as you can see in the interface, it is in the program output. So when I move it to the preview like so, it has now gone orange. So orange means it's in preview. And if I move it completely away from the preview and output, it will go blue. So let's switch the camera again directly. It'll go from blue and now it goes through to green because it's now in the output. So you can set that up for different things. So let's say on this one here, I wanted to set it up for my fjords. So I have now selected the fjords one and when I switch these across, they will change colors here. So we have the green is on the fjords, the orange is on the camera. And as we switch it back, forth, back and forth on the interface, you can see that the colors change 
like so. So this is a really great option if you have a camera person that wants to know whether their camera is being in use, they can use their phone or a tablet or some kind of device that has a browser on it to see if it's green, if their camera's in use or if it's orange and if it's in preview. So that's just a, a simple way to create tally lights from a device with vMix. Okay, so the next screen is title. So I'm just gonna click the title up here and that's going to show me any titles that I have in my vMix production. So as you can see, I have this title here and as you can see, if I go and I click title, it now gives me the option to edit it. All right, so I'm just gonna go with my title here and let's just um, change it is cool. And in order to commit those changes, I just need to click update. And as you can see, it is now updated on my, uh, my title here. And I can also add it as a preset as well by clicking add preset. And so anything that I add as a preset here also appears in the title editor in vMix. So if I right click this here, you can see that I now have web controller is cool and I can you know, go through and use that in both my vMix production. And I can also see it here in my web controller by I can click apply, I can move that across Tim web controller, Tim tutorial time and web controller is cool. So I can go through, I can easily edit my titles. So this is great if you've got a single person that wants to control the titles that's live on set, all they need is their phone or a, some sort of computer or something where they just load up a browser and they can make changes to titles, they can update them, they can add presets and all that kind of stuff directly to vMix. Uh, so that's a really good option if you do want to separate your titles using the web controller. Okay, so the final option in the menu is live LAN. So this allows you to view a local stream of your production via HLS. Now browsers that support HTML5 video should be able to display this content. This feature is handy because you may not want to send your production out to a CDN or Facebook or YouTube or something like that. You might just want someone to view it locally. So it's really good for things like school classrooms that are on the network or perhaps you know business town hall meetings and that sort of thing. So people can easily view it on their computers, phones, tablets, and even smart TVs that support HTML5 video. So you can check out our full LiveLAN video linked in the description if you wanna know a lot more about LiveLAN. So I'm gonna show you a really quick demonstration now of LiveLAN. So firstly, what we need to do is go to the streaming and go to LiveLAN in order to set it up. So I've got my LiveLAN ready to go. Uh, and what I need to do is start the LiveLAN stream here. So now I'm just gonna go over to this here and let's click on LiveLAN. And I'm gonna hit play. Now there will be about a 10 second delay just due to the way that HLS processes. Um, so as you can see here, uh, I'm now on the screen and I'm talking to myself on the live LAN. So uh, yeah, that's how you can set up live LAN and you can view it again on your browser like so. And uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and finish up the video. So that's the vMix web controller. Uh, the live LAN function is only available in vMix 25 and later. So if you don't see it, then you might wanna update if you want to use that. Now, um, it is a very lightweight way to control your vMix production. So you don't have to like have your vMix PC right next to you at all times. You could use a tablet or a phone in order to control your vMix production. And it is really great for volunteers where you can give certain shortcuts to them or titling to them. Or if you've got a second and third employee or something that wants to help run the production, you can easily use the web controller for that anywhere on the local network. So if you do have any questions, um, send us through an email via the support page on vmix.com. We can't answer technical questions via YouTube comments, so please send us through an email. So thanks for watching and we will stream you later.